What I'd like for you to do right now, I want you to think about your dream, because I'm in a room full of dreamers. Think about your dream right now. I want you to think about it and envision it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me share something with you. I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. And I want to share something with you that has changed my life. I started out, as was indicated by Jack, it's very humble beginnings. I don't know what that dream is that you have. I don't care how far-fetched it might appear to be. I don't care how disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream. But here's what I know, that that dream that you're holding in your mind, that it's possible. Let's say that together, please. Say, it's possible. See, sometimes we can't say, I can do that. But what we can say, that it's possible that I can have my dream as we run toward it, as we work on it day in and day out. No one, ladies and gentlemen, could have convinced me when I started out just over six years ago working on my dream. And I want you to think about whatever your dream is. Because I was willing to take a chance, and most people won't do that. Most of the people that you talk to to try and bring them into the business these are not risk takers. Most people have done all that they're ever going to do. They raise a family, they earn a living, and then they die. But people who are running toward their dreams, life has a special kind of meaning. And here's what I will share with you. That in the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. What you will realize is that you are greater than your circumstances, that you don't have to go through life being a victim. As Jack indicated, I was born in Miami, Florida, in an area called Liberty City, in an abandoned building on a hard linoleum floor with my twin brother. We were six weeks of age. We were adopted. When I was in fifth grade, I was identified as EMR, labeled, educable, mentally retarded, put back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade, and stayed in that category until I got out of high school. I don't have any college training. But I met a high school teacher who one day changed my life. I was waiting on another student, and when he came in, he said to me, young man, go to the board and write what I'm about to tell you. And I said, I, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, I'm not one of your students. He said, it doesn't matter. Follow my directions now. I said, I can't do that, sir. He said, why not? I said, because I'm educable, mentally retarded. And he came from behind his desk, and he looked at me. He said, don't ever say that again. Someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. The separation of talent and skill is one of the, 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 the greatest misunderstood concepts for people who are trying to excel, who have dreams that want to do things. Talent you have naturally. Skill is only developed by hours and hours and hours of beating on your craft. I've, I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous sickening work ethic you know while the other guys sleeping I'm working while the other guys eating I'm working there's no easy way around it no matter how talented you are your talent is going to fail you if you're not skilled mm -hmm. you know if you don't study if you don't work uh, really hard and dedicate yourself to being better every single day so if you want to make six figures you can't just be talking about you want to make six figures you hear what I'm saying to you tonight if you do the three things I tell you to do tonight, I guarantee you, whatever it is you want to do in life, you'll be able to do. 
you will be able to accomplish whatever you want to academically, financially, relationally, whatever. So three things. All right, now I'm gonna tell you the story. I gotta get out of here. And the story is about, you guys have probably heard about this before. It was a, it was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money. And so he went to this guru, right? And he told the guru, you know, I wanna be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you wanna be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach at 4 a.m. He liked the beach. I said, I wanna make money. I don't wanna swim. Guru said, if you wanna make money, I'll meet you tomorrow. 4 a.m. So the young man got there at 4 a.m. He all ready to rock and roll, got on a suit. He should have wore shorts. The old man grabs his hand and said, how bad do you want to be successful? He said, real bad. He said, walk on out in the water. So he walks out into the water. Watch this. When he walks out into the water, it goes waist deep. So he like, this guy crazy. I'm, Adrian, he's like, I want to make money. He got me out here swimming. I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I want to make money. He got me in. So he said, come out a little further. Walked out a little further. Then he had it right around this area, the shoulder area. So this old man crazy. He's making money, but he's crazy. He said, come on out a little further. He came out a little further. It was right at his mouth. My man like, I'm about to go back in here. This guy is mine. So the old man said, I thought you said you wanted to be successful. He said, I do. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down, hold him down. My man getting scratching, holding him down. I got you. I know you brushed it out, but I got you. He had him held down. I need you for an illustration. He had him held down just before my man was about to pass out. He raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. Somebody answer the question for me. He said, when you were underwater, what did you want to do? Lee, I'm looking for a different word though than lip. What's that word? He said, I wanted to breathe. He told the guy, he said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I don't know how many of y'all got asthma in here today, but if you ever had an asthma attack before, you short of breath, SOB, shortness of breath, you wheezing. The only thing you're trying to do is get some air. You don't care about no basketball game. You don't care what's on TV. You don't care about nobody calling you. You don't care about a party. The only thing you care about when you're trying to breathe is to get some fresh air. That's it. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad. You just kind of want it. You don't want it badder than you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you love sleep more than you love success. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're going to be successful, you've got to be willing to give up sleep. You got to be willing to work off for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, some days you're going to have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you gotta want it. You gotta go days without, listen to me, you gotta wanna be successful so bad that you forget to eat. Beyonce said once she was on the set doing her thing, three days had gone by, she forgot she didn't eat. Cause she was engaged. I'll never forget uh, when 50 Cent was doing his movie, I did a little research on 50 and 50 said that when he wasn't doing the movie, he was doing the soundtrack. And they said, when do you sleep, 50? Sleep, he said, sleep. Sleep is for those people who are broke. I don't sleep. He said, I got an opportunity to make a dream become a reality. Football players, how many football players? Got anybody like football in here? Raise your hand, anybody like football? Emmitt Smith, I used to be a Cowboy fan before they did my boy Tom Landry wrong. I used to be a Cowboy fan. And watch this, there was a commercial. Emmitt Smith had won his first Super Bowl and he had this commercial when he was lifting weights. I don't know if you saw the commercial when he was lifting and he said, he said, Emmitt said, you know what? Ah, I won the Super Bowl so I can rest now. He, had, he was doing his bench press. So he said, I won the Super Bowl so I can rest now. So he throws up about 325, boom. And he rests for about two seconds. And he's boom, boom, boom. Did you see that? He'd already won a Super Bowl. He said, I think I'm gonna take a rest. And he rests for how long? One second. Most of you won't be successful because when you're studying and you get tired, you quit. And I'm here to tell you today, if you got a, somebody came in my office the other day crying, I said, look, don't cry to give up. Cry to keep going. 
Don't cry to quit. You already in pain, you already hurt, get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me, I'm here to tell you today that you can come here, you can jump up, you can do flips, you can be excited when we give away money, but listen to me, you'll never be successful until I don't have to give you a dime to do what you do. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money, because I got it in here. So listen to me, Emmett Smith said this at the end of the commercial. Emmett Smith said, all men are created equal, some work harder in preseason. I'm going to say it again because you might have missed it. All men are created equal. Some work harder in preseason. So that means that there are some people who are going to see the professor, going to see the TA. And even when the professor says, I don't meet with you, my TA meets with you, you say, I don't want to talk to your TA. That's what it is. I don't pay the TA. Right. I pay you to teach me. So you're going to have to find some time to meet me. If I got to meet you at the mall, if I got to meet you at your house, you are going to see me.